Welcome back to the short video series on the All Atom Molecular Dynamics Methodology. This second video will describe the machinery underlying a molecular dynamics simulation. Last video, we learned the basic concept of a trajectory. We also discussed how time dependent sampling of phase space with molecular dynamics simulation can be used to obtain system properties. In this video, let's be a bit more precise about the practical steps for performing an MD simulation. An MD workflow can follow various steps depending on the end goal and several other contributing factors. Generally, the process can be summarized in three key steps. One, system preparation. Two, equilibration. Three, production. In many cases, these steps are not unambiguously defined. For example, sometimes the equilibration procedure is also sufficient to use as the production procedure. Nonetheless, this is a useful framework to begin to think with. System preparation entails building the initial configuration of the system, as well as assigning force field parameters. We will discuss the concept of a force field momentarily. System preparation is arguably the most critical stage because, as we discussed in the last video, the system is likely to spend most, if not all, of its time in some configuration near the initial configuration. To prepare the system, we need to decide what components from our real system we will include, how we will represent them, and the starting positions. In selecting our system, we need to include enough detail to capture the characteristic of interest while being computationally feasible. If our real system is a bottle composed largely of PET, should we prepare a system of one monomer, of one tenmer, of 20 tenmers? Should we have varying chain lengths, uniform lengths? What density should the initial configuration have? We can imagine that our real system may be very complex with multiple components, distributions, or even interfaces. Say, for example, we are interested in comparing differences between polymers. Here we have PET and polyethylene. We can often capture the important behavior by modeling a single molecular weight chain that is shorter than the experimental polymer. What is enough depends on the types of polymers, the properties of interest, and the type of inquiry. The best way to get started is to look at what has been done previously for similar problems or discuss with experts in a particular area. In this course, we will build various model systems and get comfortable identifying when our model is sufficient for capturing the real system properties. Let's carry on with this example of PET. Our real system is typically much larger than a reasonable scale to simulate. We do not simulate the entire bottle. If we simulate a molecule by itself, we can capture how it behaves in a vacuum, but not the influence of other surrounding molecules. Same for if we only model one chain of a polymer, for instance. Typically, we construct a box of many atoms, somewhere on the order of thousands or tens of thousands of atoms. To address the gap in scale between our real system and this representation, we utilize periodic boundary conditions, or PBCs, when preparing our system for MD simulations. Essentially, we construct a unit cell. The unit cell is three-dimensional and represents the repeat unit of an infinitely repeating system. But we only need to perform the simulation on this unit cell. If a particle or molecule passes through one side of the unit cell, it will re-enter the other side. This allows more accurate estimation of bulk properties from simulations of finite size. A good simulation of a relatively small system with periodic boundary conditions can be a good approximation to the behavior of the system for the property of interest in a larger bulk phase. When determining how large to make this small periodic system, we want to ensure there are no finite size effects or behaviors we only see because of unphysical interactions of the components with themselves. Different types of components will have different sizes where there are no longer finite size effects, but a simple way to determine is to simulate increasing sizes for a representative case and observe where our property of interest stops changing. Constructing reasonable starting systems is essential to efficiently and accurately study systems with molecular dynamics. Of course, systems for molecular dynamics simulation are not restricted to polymers. We can imagine boxes of small molecules, immersed substrates, or interfaces, to name a few. In Material Science Maestro, powerful tools called structure builders are available for constructing systems. From small molecules to polymers to multi-component homogeneous and heterogeneous complex mixtures. After system preparation, we are ready to perform MD simulations. Our first simulation is typically a relaxation or equilibration. We need to invest simulation time in bringing the system to the appropriate state point, as well as relaxing away from any artificial starting states. 
We want to bring the system to a point where it will be sampling configurations at the conditions and ensemble of interest. This will involve performing an MD simulation and analyzing the results to assess whether or not the system has equilibrated. In Material Science Maestro, we carry out molecular dynamic simulations with a program called Desmond. Anytime we run a molecular dynamic simulation in MS Maestro, we will be using Desmond. The steps for a generic simplified MD simulation are shown here. Desmond takes the input system and our input parameters, and then begins. First, the initial positions are read at time 0 from the input model. Next, the initial velocities are assigned. If initial velocities are not known from a previous simulation, velocities are randomly selected from a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution at the desired temperature. Now, the force is calculated using the force field. The force field is so fundamental to an MD simulation that it requires some attention. The force field describes the force that each atom experiences. If we look at a molecule at time t, each atom will have a force on it depending on what type of atom it is, what it is bonded to, and what is around it. There are several different types of interactions that determine how an atom will move. Each of these interactions has a prescribed functional form. Here you can see the major bonded and non-bonded interactions. The specific constants or parameters used in the interactions, for example the equilibrium bond distance in the harmonic bond, are determined by the atoms participating in the interaction. They are calculated from quantum calculations, or fit from experimental data, or both. These constants can be reused as chemical groups are bonded together in different molecules, creating a transferable representation of chemistry. The database of parameters for different sets of atoms is referred to as the force field. The Schrodinger Material Science Suite provides the proprietary OPLS-4 force field and the OPLS-2005 force field for use with the MD engine Desmond. Here is an example of some force field parameters for ethanol. The force field is a transferable set of parameters used to calculate the potential energy in the system. In ethanol, there are equilibrium bond lengths given by a simple harmonic potential. There are angles, similarly. And the force field includes electrostatic charges on the atoms. These parameters, and the others mentioned earlier, are all used to determine the potential energy of a particular configuration. Thankfully, Material Science Maestro comes with the force field parameters, so it is not commonly up to the individual user to do this parameterization. The Desmond MD simulation takes the forces defined by the force field and determines what the acceleration will be on each atom through Newton's second law of motion. It is worth mentioning that the use of a force field and Newton's classical equations is the fundamental difference between molecular dynamics simulations and quantum mechanics calculations. In MD simulations, we model the positions of nuclei with force field energy functions, whereas in QM calculations, we model the positions of both electrons and nuclei with approximate solutions to the Schrodinger equation. Returning to our MD simulation. Now that we have used a force field to solve equations of motion for all particles, all of the state properties of the system can be determined at this time step. For example, energy and pressure are then calculated. If the desired time has been reached, the simulation stops. If the desired time has not been reached, the system advances a time step. Using the acceleration, we know where the atom will be at the next time step, or t plus delta t. Force is calculated again, and the process repeats. By going through this cycle for many, many time steps, we can ideally approach an equilibrium state. When we are equilibrating, we are taking our initial configuration and moving towards our desired state. The collection of data and snapshots over time comprise the trajectory, which can be analyzed to assess whether the system has converged to an equilibrium. Typically, we take one or more properties and analyze a plot of the output versus time. Here, for example, we can see the density versus time for a system that has quickly equilibrated to one that has still not reached an equilibrium state. In the latter, we would want to revisit our initial configuration or run a longer equilibration protocol. In the former, we likely have a well-equilibrated system ready for the production stage. The final category of activities are all the steps used to obtain our final data. We refer to this collection of steps as the production procedure. In some cases, our production procedure is independent of our equilibration procedure. That is, we run another MD simulation starting with the output of the equilibration. This new simulation is used to extract properties. In some cases, our equilibrium procedure is sufficient to also use as our production run. 
This distinction changes case by case, depending on many factors, our interpretation of the results, a balance between computational expense and accuracy, and the goals of our study. It is worth mentioning that with an equilibration or production procedure, it is common to run multiple molecular dynamic simulation, creating what we often refer to as a multi-stage workflow. Material Science Maestro facilitates setting up these complex workflows. With the production procedure, we are determining what needs to be done to get quality, reproducible data, just as we would when beginning an experiment. Suppose we are performing MD simulations to predict glass transition temperature. Just as a chemist would have a careful protocol for executing a DSC experiment, we want our production simulation to ensure that we are equilibrating to a good starting density with a big enough system to capture glass transition temperature well, setting a cooling rate which captures enough of the behavior, using multiple replicates to capture the deviation. The production procedure considers aspects such as how the system was equilibrated, how long we need to average properties over, how many replicates with different structures we need to capture variability, and how large of a system we need to simulate to capture the bulk behavior well. Establishing a production procedure is generally done by exploring common approaches for similar materials and properties, or performing a series of trial calculations. Once a production procedure has been established, it can be reused in other studies of similar materials. In both the equilibration and production stages, we will need to define various parameters for our simulation. For example, the simulation time, the time step, recording intervals, thermostats or barostats if needed, and thermodynamic ensembles. Each of these decisions depends on the system that we are studying and the properties that we are after. Here, we will just mention a few best practices and considerations, but undoubtedly, the best ways to learn to make these decisions are to learn by doing and study what has been done before on related systems. Let's start by thinking about time in the context of molecular dynamics. The first thing to understand is the rough time scales which key chemical motions occur. Here we see a pretty standard chemical timeline. Bond vibrations occur on the order of femtoseconds. Rotations are typically on the order of picoseconds. Most molecular movement that we might be interested in observing with MD occurs in the nano to microseconds range. Fortunately, with modern advanced GPUs, we can capture the femtosecond to microsecond timescales with MD simulation. For all atom molecular dynamic simulation, our time step will usually be two femtoseconds. That is, the amount of time allocated for one loop in our MD cycle. Our total simulation time will be anywhere from several hundred picoseconds to several hundred nanoseconds, meaning several million loops through our cycle. In general, simulation time is a trade-off between the computational expense of running longer simulation versus the quality and relevance of the results. In some cases, we may not need very long simulation to attain a property of interest, like density, of an amorphous small molecule. However, to observe diffusion or aggregation, we may need significantly longer simulation time. As a very general guideline, usually our simulation time should allow us to sample the system changes relevant to the property of interest at least 10 times. For example, if you are trying to get an average density, you should capture at least 10 of the major volume fluctuations. Like we discussed in the first video, we want to ensure that we are simulating long enough such that the ensemble of configurations is large enough for capturing the property of interest. Beyond simulation time and the time step, there is an additional time consideration. That is, how often we actually want to save the positions and energies of all of the atoms in the simulation. We call these the trajectory recording interval and energy recording interval. Imagine this movie reel to represent the 1 million snapshots in a 2 nanosecond MD simulation with 2 femtosecond time steps. Saving all of the positions of all of the atoms each time step will take a lot of computer memory. Saving the energy of a time step also takes memory, but not as much. More likely, we would save positions at some fraction of the frames, far fewer than we even represent here, for what it's worth. And then we'll save the energy, shown here with the letter E, at a more frequent fraction, but also not at every single time step. Again, how long we're recording information, both the recording intervals and the full simulation time, depends on what we're trying to capture and will always be a trade-off. Another essential parameter for performing MD simulation is the thermodynamic ensemble. These relate to the thermodynamic potentials that we may be familiar with, such as isothermal and isobaric. The most common ensembles we will use 
are constant number of particles, constant volume, constant temperature, and Vt. Or, constant number of particles, constant pressure, constant temperature, and Pt. To sample in these ensembles, we must control temperature and pressure with a thermostat and barostat respectively. These controls maintain the temperature and pressure by making small adjustments to the system. Certain properties are only accessible in certain ensembles. Individual workflows will have a recommended or required ensemble. For example, the NVT ensemble cannot be used for calculating density or glass transition temperature because the density will not change when both N and V are held constant. In some cases, there is more choice. For example, diffusion can be calculated in NVT or with constant energy in the NVE ensemble. This decision is generally made by exploring common approaches for similar workflows or performing a series of trial calculations. When setting up simulations, the most commonly adjusted parameters will be presented to us in panels with default values provided. These default values are often good starting points, but not necessarily perfect. They can be adjusted based on our objectives. One major benefit of working in Schrodinger's material science suite is that defaults for various workflows are chosen based on scientific validation, minimizing potential for error in our simulation design. In this video, we learned a bit more precisely about the machinery underlying a molecular dynamics simulation. We discussed how constructing a reasonable starting system with periodic boundary conditions is essential. Moreover, we introduced the concept of a force field, which is used in MD to calculate the energy of the system. Finally, for equilibrium and production simulations, we described some of the key parameters that the user needs to consider. In the next video, we'll give a brief overview of the properties that can be obtained from MD simulations. We will also describe some of the common pitfalls to look out for.